Hello, and welcome to the third episode of the Beginnings of the National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education podcast series. During this series, we will focus on the history of the center, as well as some stories from the beginning stages of the center's formation. We will be interviewing folks who have been involved with the center from the early beginnings and who have impacted the center in a productive and meaningful way. In this episode, we get to hear from Sister Vivian Linkauer, a member of the Sisters of Charity. She has been a strong supporter of the center for many years and had the privilege of witnessing the founding of the center in 1987. With over 30 years of unwavering support and serving as a long-term member of the center's advisory board, Sister Vivian has been a key player in many of the center's endeavors. She continues to help the center today by volunteering in the university's archives and working with material from the center. Keep listening to hear some of the great insights and stories that Sister Vivian has to share. Sister Vivian, would you please describe your earliest memories of hearing about the establishment of the center? Sure. Um, I knew that... uh, Noel and, and Gemma had met in Israel the year that Noel went over to, to Korea uh, to teach there for a year. And um, I also knew that Joanne Boyle, who was the newly inaugurated president of Seton Hill in 1987, went to a conference in New Orleans. Um, it was the National Association of Independent Colleges and Universities was the conference, and Pope St. John Paul II spoke at that conference to college presidents. And in that speech, he asked them to try to do something to help um, students and our students and other uh, faculty members to understand something about the Holocaust and its significance so that the same thing would not happen again. So I know that that Joanne heard that message and um, somehow things kind of, Noel's going to visit her in Israel and her work with Isaac there, it it all seemed to flow together. And in my recollection, that's kind of how the center got started. I see, I see. Um, And do you recall when that was, I mean, just approximately? Well, it was. It, I know that the uh, Pope's talk was in 1987. It was in, in September, mm-hmm. and at, at a conference of that um, organization that I named, I think they called it NICU or something. I see. I see. Thank you. What was your role in helping to found the center? I think I, I had, in the beginning I had a fairly minimal role, except I was the academic dean at that point. I was the academic dean at Seton Hill from 1982 to 1989, and Joanne was the president my last two years that I worked as academic dean. So I was certainly aware of you know the meetings back and forth, and that this thing was on it, you know, was getting on its feet. But I didn't have a particular role except to encourage them and you know to try to pay attention to what was happening. But you know, it was a pretty minimal role I think in the beginning. Now, as time went on, I uh, was on the advisory board of um, the center, and so of course then I, I had a you know a more practical interest in it, and um, you know and went to those meetings, and that's how I met most of the people who were you know in the early history. I see, I see. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Who were the most important people that you worked with? during the early stages of the center's creation? Well, obviously, uh, Joanne, I, my office was right next to Joanne's, and, you know, I was in and out of her office a lot. And, and, and I, you know, I know Gemma and Noel and Lois. Um, we were all colleagues at Seton Hill for a long time. So, I, you know, I worked with, with those people and was interested in what they were doing. Then I think from the Jewish community, I think uh, Marsha and Stanley Gumberg were, were very active and, and very supportive. Bob Davis, who is here in Greensburg. Um, Sarah Perman was the rabbi downtown. I knew her. Sybil Schwartz, who was on our campus, uh, was very interested. Tom Voss. Uh, who was a good friend of Joanne's. He was a a university president in West Virginia, I think, at one time. But then he went on and did 
other work all around the world. So I, I know he was in and out of the um, those meetings a lot. And um, our local bishops certainly were interested in, in what we were doing, you know, both Pittsburgh and Greensburg. And then Greta Stokes was on our campus and... Um, and, you know, as she became more interested in it now, I think when it first started, she was probably still a student. Um, I don't remember exactly what, exactly what year was what, but mm-hmm. anyhow. So that, those are the, the people that I knew best. Mm-hmm. Um, um, could you describe briefly just the, um, the role of Sister Gemma, um, Sister Noel, and Sister Lois, please, from what you knew? Um, okay, well, I think in the very beginning it was Gemma and Noel who sort of hatched this idea along with Joanne and um and Lois was Lois and I were both deans at that point I think Lois was the dean of students and I was the academic dean Mm -hmm. so you know we were all you know kind of on board with generally what was happening so and it it was interesting it was something new and, and different and that we really hadn't thought of before. And it took a lot of work and I think a lot of courage for them to um, <laughs> really get this moving. And, and because people were like, what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> um, you know, but I, it, it had real merit to it. And obviously all these years later, we see it really has, has been a wonderful uh, development in, in this community. I think it certainly brought the Christian and and Jewish communities much closer together and working together. So I think it's been a great thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I certainly agree. What other important things do you want to tell me about the early days of the center? Well, you know, I watched with fascination. Joanne was just um, a real powerhouse as a president. And because she'd been in this community for so long, teaching English at Seton Hill and, and then becoming the president, um, she was well known in the community and and she just had a grace about her that, um, you know, encouraged people to, to join up. I mean, um, I can remember board members often saying, well, the train's already out of the station. You know, because Joey had just sort of moved along and charmed people and um, and people were willing to work with her, and, and she was a, a charming, smart lady to work with. So I, th- I think that had a, a lot to do with it. And I think they were very creative about um, figuring out ways to engage the local community. They did art exhibits, they had plays, you know, they engaged our theater department, did, did some plays, they did musical things. I remember Marvin Hall's. Um, had some connection with, with doing the music once. And then they started, um, they really started the, the program with uh, a Crystal Knot um, memorial. And they, then they did that every year and they brought um, Joanne and, and the, I guess the Jewish community around here knew who the survivors were in the, in the surrounding area. And they brought survivors um, to the Crystal Knot. Uh, memorials every year and then those people spoke and spoke of their memories and you know then it's just it's such a powerful witness to you know to hear them and hear their stories and I think that's what the Pope was hoping would happen is that if people really understood what happened in Germany and and Poland and all of those countries where um, the Jews were being so persecuted you know I think people would would not want that to happen here and not want it to happen in any country. So um, I, I think they just were very creative in, in finding ways to, you know, connect with the Jewish community here and in Pittsburgh and also do things that would draw attention to our connections in a, in a variety of ways. Yes, yes, thank you. In your opinion, what was the founding vision of the center, please? Well, as I said, Joanne, you know, attended that meeting with Pope John Paul II, and she came home enthused about the message of encouraging uh, colleges and universities to seek ways to, to reach out and help others understand the Holocaust. And since we were an educational institution, we were certainly, you know, set to be able to do that and and to understand its significance. And so. Um, it, she worked 
you know, I think through our the local bishop, and I know that eventually we set up a, a program with the Diocese of, of Greensburg to help educate the educators in, in our local area, especially in the Catholic schools, to understand this, and, and you know, and it grew from there. So I, I think all of that was, you know, was important, and it, it really took a while to, you know, to get funding, uh, and you know, because they had to raise funding to help do this. And and I think our Jewish friends were very um, generous with both their advice and their money to, to help this to happen. Yes, yes, yes. Tell me, in your opinion, how has the work and the mission of the National Catholic Center for Holocaust Education changed over the years? I know I, I gave a lot of thought to this, and I don't know. I don't think the mission has changed. The mission is still to uh, help people to understand what the Holocaust was and what its significance is in the history of the world. And and I think we're still working at doing that through you know the summer programs and the uh, whatever educational things Seton Hill does. I but I think that that mission has kind of deepened and expanded. Um, as time has gone on and engaged more people. So it's just, you know, because I know just from, I've been working on those boxes and boxes of things that came over from the Holocaust Center and are now in the archives. And, you know, we did a lot to, with local schools and local educators um, to try to get this idea going. And, and I think we were really hugely successful. So I, I don't think it's it, I don't think the mission has really changed so much, but um, it certainly has changed hands through other directors and, and assistant directors and so on. But I, I think people have stayed pretty close to you know what we've set out to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sister Vivian. Is there anything else that you would like to add about the center? Well, just, you know, I'm, I'm really so happy to see it continue, and I'm happy to see Jim Beharic, whom I hired 40-some years ago, I think, to teach the theology on this campus, that he's the director, and I think he's doing a marvelous job. And it's, you know, and I'm glad that you're connected with it and that Hannah now is. It's uh, it's just heartening to me. I've been around Seton Hill for such a long time, like 50 years, I think. And it's, you know, it's, it's heartening to me to just see um, how people, you know, devote themselves to making the, the mission of the university happen and the mission of this center. And I just I hope it continues on and on. <laughs>